All of these I just realized are misaligned, except for that first one. Uh, hey guys, I'm Rod the Fox, and welcome back to Vonda the Apes. Now, this time around, we should be able to finish up the uh, Dreadnought this episode. Now, I know I've been saying that more often what I should have been, but I really do think we are getting really close to getting this finished. Because like I mentioned in the last episode, there isn't much left that we have to do. Because uh, given the amount of work that we managed to do last episode actually, like replacing the hallways, starting the uh, bracket system here, it, there really isn't much for me to do. Oh yeah, I'm not going to clean this area up yet because like I mentioned in the last episode, I'm going to be placing these uh, cross be the uh, beams going across and they are going to connect directly to this. So if I were to clean this up now, then I would just have to remove the beams later to begin with anyway. Well, right now I'm going to finish up these old doorways and then I'm going to get ready and set up these ones here, the new ones. So guys, I'll, uh, I'll catch you in a bit while I uh, get these old holes all closed up. <sighs> Hopefully it shouldn't take me too long. Okay guys, I got the old doorways all sealed up here now. And so what I'm going to be doing now is that I'm going to uh, clean this up a bit. I fill in the missing beams and then I'm going to get ready and set up for the uh, new entryway to these doors. So I'll catch you guys again in a bit. Okay, I got all that done now. Now I'm going to try and plot out where I'm going to place the uh, little uh, cross uh, beam here. Because, well, I do know where they're going to be laterally wise, but I don't know where they're going to be vertically wise. Because, like, well, I know that they're going to be over where these hallways are, but I need to make sure that they're put into the proper spot vertically. Which is why I'm currently removing these beams. Because, like I mentioned earlier, like, I don't want to put them into a spot where it has these slopes, because it won't connect properly because, well, these slopes will be in the way of it. And uh, once I get that done, then I'll uh, place in the uh, beams here. Now, if calculations are correct, this top row here should be fine. Because I think how I got this set up is right in between two uh, sections. And yes, I do. So I'll go and get this copied and then I'll go and I uh, get ready and place on top one of the uh, hallways here. Well, catch you guys in a second. Okay, I got the first one copied. Okay, somehow managed to place it without uh, hitting the mouse button, which is weird. But now I'm going to try and find the proper spot for this. Basically, I'm essentially trying to find the uh, proper spot so I can have the whole entire top and bottom like area of this completely covered. But it's a bit easier said than done. And I think I just got it. Yeah, because I can't go any further in. I can't go any further up. So this is that honestly went easier than I originally thought. This one is, imperf is perfectly aligned with this. Yes. Hold on, guys. I'll think of something here. I got it. Guys, watch. This section right here I'm about to place is one block inward. That front section here, that uh, first one I placed in, that is one block inward from the front. So I think this will work. All I have to do now is just place in the rest. Got the top section done, now time for the bottom. But before I do that, I have to clear all this out. So the sections here can uh, get attached properly. Oh boy. Guys, I'm gonna say this. I knew this this ship was going to be a big project. I wasn't expecting for it to be such of a huge one either, however. I mean, well, like I mentioned in the previous episode, I mean, the size of this pales in comparison to the uh, Skyhead Destroyer. I mean, that ship is always going to be the uh, biggest ship I ever made because, well, it is. What a biggest single-hulled ship. This one 
is the biggest double hull ship. And well, it was going to be originally, well, not only the uh, biggest, but the only triple hold ship until I found out that, that this thing was too freaking heavy in order for it to fly. It was like a lead blimp or lead zeppelin. Yeah. <laughs> you really want to use an analogy? Uh, yeah, essentially, like, it was just way too big for the size that it was, given the internal side to work with. And yeah, like, I'm still a bit bummed that this thing didn't initially go to plan. But I'm also glad at the same time that it didn't because I get to expand my horizons a bit more. And well, I'm also glad that the whole ship didn't get scrapped and that I'm able to still use the main core part of this ship. Because I, the, even though one whole hull section is gone, it, this is still the same, the same ship. It, it just looks different. And well, I'm hoping to keep the same type of feel all the way through, it, even though it's going to look different from what it did originally. Because, well, I want this to still serve the same purpose as it did originally when it had three hulls to be the BBS, the big bad ship, to uh, basically just destroy whatever remaining factions are left. And like I mentioned in the previous episode, this will only be used for late game. So say we're down to the last two or three factions, this is when this ship will be brought in. Because not only would something of this magnitude be feasible to spawn in, but it'll also be like, okay, this is the end of the game. Let's see just how much we can act, how much damage we could do here. Because like from the start to mid game, it wouldn't exactly make much sense to spawn in something this big. And well, it wouldn't exactly be financially feasible either is even though the uh, resource zones do give them more resources since centralized was deleted. Um, yeah, I still think putting in something like this wouldn't exactly be a good idea. Because, well, even if it is possible for us to properly finance this type of ship and keep it maintained, it's just going to make everything complete pushover and that's not what I want. Because like I mentioned in a previous episode, like, I want to give, I want to essentially give the enemy factions a fighting chance. Now, how much of a fighting chance? I don't know. But I at least do want it to be that I basically, I deserve the victory, not something that I feel like I just cheesed this. What the hell? Because I mean, for as gratifying and for as simple as it would be to just say, freak this, I'm gonna bring a super, something super overpowered and as uh, so just cheese all these fights. It wouldn't give the same like, level of satisfaction as say bringing in something that would give like, okay, that was a close fight, but it was awesome. So uh, essentially the whole point I'm trying to bring across here, I want these fights to be fun without them being wasteful. Because like, much like I was saying, if I bring in like an overpowered ship, I, it's just going to be like, okay, fight's done, next one, blah de blah de blah And that's not the kind of feeling I want to get from this. And how? Oh, I do have to go down one lower, okay. Use the previous one as a template, you idiot. And I know some people may be concerned about like this have just a ridiculous block count because well, yes, even though I did trim this down twice, this do just have a ridiculous block count. And plus, well, given the armament that I'm going to be giving this, eh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be easy to uh, think that, yeah, I'm just bringing in something extremely overpowered. And all of these, I just realized are misaligned, except for that first one. Uh, of course, if something ain't misaligned vertically, it's going to be misaligned horizontally and it's either going to be front to back or side to side. In this case, it had to be side to side, didn't it? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, just because your Y coordinate is fine. And even if your Z coordinate is fine, your X coordinate may not be. So come across that exact same experience in Minecraft. 
more than once, especially uh, if I'm in the process of building, some, bu bu building something big. I, especially if I'm making something that's symmetrical. If I make one side, I have to meticulously count up how many blocks is in that one side or else it's going to be completely misaligned and, I, and I'm going to be drawn out the wall. As the phrase goes, measure twice, cut once. Whoa. Okay, I'm going to get a better look at this. Oh, wow. I kind of like to look at that, if I must be honest. Well, something's not right here. Did I really do that? Okay, uh... Never mind. Crisis averted. Reason why this is two beams here and down the bottom there is one because I don't have any salt blocks placed on that yet. Okay. Crisis averted. Never mind. I'm just going to continue working. Okay, I wasn't expecting for it to uh, light up like this as well. I'm not complaining. And these sections here, there's going to be no slope blocks placed in this area. It's all going to be flat. I think I uh, found, uh, thought of a way now to actually make this look pretty, pretty good. Alright guys, I got the top section done. Now I'm going to start work on the bottom section. Guys, there's, a, there's someone I actually want to uh, mention here. Because it's the uh, newest uh, member actually part of our Discord server. Link in the description below. And it's uh, the Maddock. And he um, gave me a few uh, tips on a few things with the cargo carrier. And that's one thing that I know I'm going to need to do is uh, make a fast and very efficient cargo carrier because well that's my plan anyway is to make a, a, a cargo carrier because instead of like I might also have a um, chain of like small resource uh, transfer stations going in between resource zones so that way if a cargo ship needs quick refueling all they have to do is either go to the closest resource zone or go to the uh, nearest uh, cargo station and do be able to refuel right up really quickly. Now, one thing he suggested is using the custom jets. I was considering on using those because in general, I do think that the custom jets are really cool and I have messed with them a small bit. So, I mean, like I do have a bit of experience, but I could use more. And so I think that's what I'm going to be doing with the cargo ship is using those. And you and they also sent me a big creation that I might take a look at at the next episode. See if we can get some ideas on exactly what to do next. Because like I mentioned in a uh, few episodes now, I'm always and I mean always looking for tips. Because even though like I have played this game quite a bit, there's still a lot of this game that I don't properly know. And especially with the uh, centralized resources uh, gone, I really had to change my uh, strategy going into this. Because originally my strategy was like, okay, build a fleet of ships, have them get progressively bigger and stronger as the campaign went on and have fun with it. But since this centralized is gone, like I said, I really had to rethink my strategy because originally with centralized, all I had to do was just put in enough resource storage so that the uh, ship would actually fly in this mode here in the uh, vehicle designer. But other than that, like I didn't need resource storages. So that wasn't really so much of a issue. All I had to do was to make sure that the ship didn't use too much resources that we had in the pool and make sure that the uh, ships could hold up in a battle and make sure that they could um, dispatch the enemies. And the missile fleet I had did a really, really good job at that, uh, at it. Because I mean, if I must be honest, I'm quite proud of the missile fleet that I made to the point where I'm honestly disappointed I can I can no longer use those without giving some heavy modification to them because like I, they were a lot of fun to make and plus they were the first 
iteration of me finding my building style. And one thing I'll say, I don't quite have my building style down pat yet, and I'm honestly not sure when, but at least I do have a better idea of what my building style is than what I had originally. Because when I first started playing this game, uh, well, first of all, I had no clue what the hell I was doing. So I didn't even know what my building style was. And plus, like, the stuff I made was very haphazardly just pieced together. And it was just one of the things I made. Like, I tried making a triangular shape flyer. Which, I mean, it worked. But it also stretched the definition of something that works. I mean, it was very, very weird. I mean, it was an interesting idea, but it didn't exactly perform a way that uh, I would want something to work now. Because, well, I had no clue what I was doing. But now, after so many hours playing this game and going and like, playing the campaign, well, I never went through the campaign because the previous computers I had were absolute trash, so I couldn't actually do it. But even for the little amount of experience that I gained in the campaign, it's been valuable. Because, I mean, I not only do I kind of know what to expect from enemy ships, but I also know a bit more of what my playstyle is, and also what my building style is. And one thing I can say is knowing those two things is very valuable in something like this. Because one thing I'll say, if you don't know what you're doing, you're not going to get very far. It may seem a bit harsh, but it's true. It's the same with almost anything, really. I mean, a lot of stuff takes time and practice. I mean, one thing I'll give this game, and Lathrix said the exact same thing, this game does have a steep learning curve to it. So, I mean, well, yes, there is a tutorial, and that does give you a few pointers on what the basics of the game is. And they have helped out a little bit with the uh, prefab holes and stuff that you can use. But still, there's still a lot of stuff in this that a tutorial would not teach you. And that is your own play and build style. Because like, each of these weapons have their own upsides and downsides. There isn't not one single weapon in this game that I would say that overpowers another. I mean, sure, there are really powerful weapons in this game, don't get me wrong, but there's not really a single weapon in this game that overshadows another. Because like missiles, for example, those things can be rather deadly, but they're also easy to shoot down. You're not exactly going to expect to get something that says, hey, this thing is immensely powerful. I'm going to use it and destroy everything. Sorry. Every single thing in this game has a weakness. Like lasers, they can be blocked by smoke. So you can't exactly expect to say, hey, I'm going to burn these guys down with, the, with these lasers and expect no problems. That's not gonna happen. Because again, that's not how this game works. And I'll say the same thing that I learned playing Apex Legends. This game does really have a type of system where find your niche, find what works for you. This game is not going to tell you that. That's something for you to find out on your own. And for as difficult as what that may seem to be, I can honestly say I like that kind of system because it does give you freedom on what you want to do, but it doesn't allow you to build something insanely broken either. And like a same thing with the type of craft that you want to build. Would it be a boat or an airship? Well, one thing I'll give boats, they are a bit easier to run because they don't, they don't require as much engine power to function because like all you're doing is just powering propellers. But yeah, that's all you're doing. You're just providing enough power so you can actually move. But you always have to keep in mind of mines and torpedoes but with an airship you don't need to worry about stuff that's on the water because well you're in the freaking air but at the same time you also need to keep in mind of a high power drain 
because you need a lot and I mean a lot of power in order for something like this to fly and I'm not gonna be afraid to admit that something like this is not freaking easy and well I have more experience with uh, building airships than what I do with say building boats but that's not to say that I'm not exactly unfamiliar with building boats either because well I have built them before but at the same time, if I must be honest, if I had to choose between a boat or an airship, I'd go with an airship. Because like, I mean sure, like I mentioned, they require more power in order to be viable. I find them way cooler. Because like, instead of being in the water, you're in the friggin' air. And well, I have a soft spot for flying things to begin with anyway. I swear I take that uh, trait from my, my from my buddy Tails, but I feel more at home with a flying craft than what I do with a boat, to be honest. I, like I said, like I have nothing against boats, and more than likely I'll be building more boats in the future. But for me, if I had a choice, I'd go with this. I mean, having the opportunity to say, hey, I'm gonna build a literal flying fortress, because well, I can. I can do that and that's well one of the main reasons why I love this game so much it has such creative freedom I would say like it doesn't exactly have as much creative freedom as say, a game like Minecraft does but it's not supposed to this is a way more realistic take on a sandbox game and one thing I'll say the only game I can say that comes to mind when it comes to realism especially onto this level would probably have to be Space Engineers because that game is extremely realistic and more well, I'll say Minecraft can be more realistic with the different mods that you pick this one you get something that's extremely realistic right out of the box you don't need mods or anything in order to like enhance the experience though so I'm not saying that getting mods for this game would exactly be a bad idea because well I could see how mods will also benefit this game at the same time but I can also say that my personal experience this game doesn't exactly have like the same limited feel as what Minecraft does I would say I do love Minecraft that I played that game since 2012 and yeah I can honestly say I love that game like Minecraft is one of their favorite games of all. It is one of my favorite games. But at the same time, I feel like that the vanilla form of it is also a bit limiting. In the fact that you only have a certain amount of blocks to play with. And given the type of stuff that I, that I like working with, yeah, mods are pretty much more or less something that's needed. But going back to this game, I feel like, for me, I have enough stuff right out of the gate. And I feel that this game doesn't really need anything for my personal needs. Basically, fulfill my own personal need. And I realize that this video has been going on for quite a bit. So, I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put these ducks on as I do my outro. So that's gonna do it for this time guys, so raise the like button from the depths if you guys enjoyed, subscribe ring a bell if you guys want to see more stuff like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Later guys! Oh man, oh, this ship is still coming along. And I don't want you guys to worry that this ship won't have enough lift. These sections here will have more thrusters placed onto them. Because, well, that's kind of the part of the reason why I actually these in the first place. So, I can have a bit more of a secure spot for all these thrusters. And, if there's enough space left over, I might actually remove all these thrusters here down at the bottom, the main lift ones, and place them up top. Though, I'm not 100% sure on that yet. That all depends on if I actually have enough space for it, which, well, that is still yet to be determined. Yeah.